Hot tip today. Mass properties if you haven't used it or mass prop in the command line. So you have an irregular shaped object, you want to know where the center of gravity is or maybe you want the moment of inertia, you can use it for any built up type of shape you have. You can use some commands in AutoCAD to kind of find that. So say we have set object here, right? I'm not sure if the LP version allows you to do it or not, but there is a geometric center. So the thing's got a uniform structure to it, right? The weight's the same throughout. You could just use the geometric center. That'll give you your center of gravity for the piece. All right. In cases where it's not, you can use a the mass property. In order to do that, you got to use a region. So you look right now, this is a polyline. I'll typically copy that, move it up. I usually use an offset that's like a set amount, so you always know what it is. In this case, use 10 feet. Then do mass prop on the command line. Pick your object. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta make this a region first. I'll make it a region, you just type in region, select the object. Now it's a region. If you look here, instead of a close polyline, do the mass prop. Select. You get this pop up, it'll kind of give you everything you need. So the centroid, it gives you a point. That's just a point in space. So now if you did the point command, you could just punch in those coordinates and you'd see it'd be right in the center of it. If you want to use the moment of inertia feature here, you can see it's kind of gigantic right now, right? It's calculating it about the zero x-axis and the zero y-axis. So if you want to know the actual moment of inertia, say this was a built-up eye shape, you'd have to move it, use that grip point, and then set it at zero, zero. That makes sense? So if I had to do this, I would take this. I know that that point's... Uh, So that's what it'd give me for my CG. Punched in those coordinates. Move that from there. Now if I did the same thing with the mass prop. Give you the moment of inertia about that point. It's still gigantic because it's a big body, but you get the idea. Okay. You can see the CG is kind of adjusted as far as... Uh, where it is, it's at zero, zero now, but you know. Okay. Other thing it's useful for is say you had a plate girder, cover plates on it. You know, if it's nice and symmetrical, it's pretty easy. The CG is going to be at the mid height and mid length. If you have cover plates that are offset to one side, maybe in like a demo operation, you got cover plates set off here. So you can't just assume that it's going to be at the center. Obviously, it'd be farther out to the left. So you make a bounding box around all of the plates or the whole girder, right? It looks kind of like this where you have the step. Now the weight in and out of the page, the, uh, the thickness of everything doesn't change. So you can still use the center of it there. But if you make this a region now, which I already did, did the mass properties, you'll get the same thing. All right, I'll give you another coordinate as to where the centroid is and you can use that in any calculation or anything you had there. For the X and Y sure. on the central, <laughs> yep. is that always with, always with mm -hmm. respect to the bottom most, like this, this point that would be like right here, so down, this, down by the thickness of the cover plate? or what's The right? centroid is referenced from zero, zero. So let's just look at that real quick. If I punch in a point now. From um, zero, zero in model space. Zero, zero in model space, yeah. 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 So if I'm specifying a point, I punch in 899.8434, comma, 150. See, it makes it right there. So it's always from zero, zero. If I did the same thing with it over, like in this area down here, it would give you the point and negative coordinates. So it's kind of foolproof. Yep. And again, if you're going to use this for built-up shapes, say you had an eye shape, it's going to give you that moment of inertia, which you can check it with any section properties. It's always, it's it's always the right uh, section properties. It's just referencing it to a zero zero line on the x and y axis. So you got to move, make sure you move the centroid to that zero zero location. All right.
more complicated objects that you had something, you know, built up uh, concrete shape. It's solid. So you're going to say it's got a uniform weight everywhere. If you draw that in 3D, you can do the same thing. Or it'll give you the centroid in three dimensions. And that's the same idea. So again, if I punch in that point using all three coordinates, I mean, that's where the, the CG of the whole thing is. You can kind of skip the, the calculation. To make it kind of nice, you, I usually put like a corner of this object at zero, zero. That way when it's referencing something, it's not like, you know, 4,992 in one direction and whatever in the other. It's pretty easy. Nice number.